June sparks the start of the new school year in the country. Children are eager to go back to school to see their old classmates, meet new friends, and learn new things from their teachers. Despite the excitement, parents, schools, and some students are having problems adjusting to the K-12 education system, which was passed on May 15, 2013 by President Benigno Aquino III through RA 10533, or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. The aim of the K-12 system is to provide every Filipino children with the education they need to compete in a global context. By adding two years, the DepEd hopes to reach its goal of giving students enough time to master skills and ideas to prepare for tertiary education or college, middle-level skills development, employment, and entrepreneurship. Bagong curriculum ni President Noy para sa kataguyod ng liberal policy, to ay anim na taon na no sa high school, pero mula sa kinder ang ganon sa high school na kung saan ay para matiyak yung pagbibigay ng cheap labor sa iba't ibang bansa. Imbis na apat na taon lang sila sa high school, uh, magka mag magkakaroon pa ng karagdaging dalawang taon. Dagdag na dalawang taon, ibig sabihin, dagdag na responsibilidad, dagdag na gastos sa bagay ng mga magulang. The model of the K-12 education system is as follows. A mandatory kindergarten level, Six years of primary education, grades 1 to 6. Four years of junior high school, grades 7 to 10. And two years of senior high school, grades 11 to 12. Though the intentions of the K-12 system are honorable, many people, including parents, are not in favor of this, as it means additional costs for the education of their children, as well as the inconvenience it might bring to the students, especially those who are prepared to enter high school and college. <laughs> magdadagdag ka na naman ng dalawang taon, yung anim na taon nga sa elementary, magpaaral, sobrang hirap na. Siguro okay siya sa mga may mga pera. Okay na lang din kasi right after the graduation, may ano na din eh, pwede na din sila makapaganak ng trabaho. Tapos pwede na din sila mag-aral sa college na nagtatrabaho. Another problem that arises from the implementation of the system is the lack of preparedness of many schools' facilities, especially in the number of classrooms and teachers available. Mga skwelahan talaga natin ay kulang talaga sa pasilidad, oh, kulang sa classrooms, upuan, textbooks pa, no, mali-mali. Yung mga teachers din natin ay kulang ang pasahod. Uh, paano sila makakapagturo ng maayos kung sila mismo ay nagsastruggle sa kanilang pang-araw-araw na gastusin. Hindi totoo yung kiniklaim ng Aquino government na wala na daw pagkukulang sa ating mga pasilidad at equipment. Kasi kung totoo siya, napaka-atrasado ng ating mga facilities, hindi pa rin tayo multimedia. Is a country prepared for the K-12 education system? What are the problems faced by students, parents, and schools since the implementation of the new educational system? How is the government preparing and handling the new educational system as the new school year begins? Good evening. You are watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm attorney Karen Jimeno. And I'm attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, we will discuss your legal rights on the K-12 education system. What you need to know as concerned parents and students on the new system. Our guest for tonight is Mr. Benjo Basas, Chairperson of the Teachers Dignity Coalition. Yeah. Good, good evening, Benjo. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, welcome to Legal HD. Yes, sir. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So don't worry, we won't ask you uh, legal questions <laughs> so much. Yeah. I know you're, you're not a lawyer. I'm worried. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so you being a teacher, a public yeah. school teacher, um, you're familiar with uh, the K-12 system. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe can you give us... Uh, a brief background, or, no, of, especially for, for those who are, may not be too familiar with it. Well, um, um, basically, no, it started in, in 2010, no, in, mm. uh, during the, the Aquino administration's um, um, assumption into the office. No, and uh, the president himself, no, um, may marching order siya no, sa Department of Education no, na ituloy na itong uh, K-12. And ang sinasabi niya nga doon ay maiksi no, yung sampung taon. No? So, hindi naman yung iksi ang pinag-uusapan natin. Ano? That is our main contention ano? or, or initial contention. Ano? Hindi naman yung iksi o haba ng, ng pag-aaral yung, yung issue dito. No? So, nandun kami sa issue na 
gaano ba dapat no uh, ihanda yung uh, yung eskwelahan ano ng ng buong lipunan no ng buong society at basically ng gobyerno no, para doon sa ating um, um, mga bata no so sa kasalukuyan actually hindi na sa kasalukuyan no kasi nandoon na tayo actually sa third year of implementation ano no? yeah ng ng K to 12 uh, program wala na tayong third year ngayon ano meron tayo ngayon ay grade 8 na no mm -hmm. uh, uh, grade 9 na no at um, um, next year no ay etong etong uh, school year 2014 2015 ano po ito yung huling batch no na natin na uh, gagraduate no under the old uh, curriculum no? so yun pinahaba siya no at um, um, inilagay no yung um, yung kindergarten program na, na ngayon ay bahagi na talaga no kasi before ito ay optional, optional mm -hmm. no pero ngayon no uh, doon sa pagpasa nung Kindergarten Act nung, nung, nung 2012 no ay naging bahagi na siya talaga no. So ibig sabihin yung mga bata na 5 years old no ay obligado na sila mandatory na sila ay mag-enroll na ng kinder and then um, another uh, um, six years for elementary and another four years no for um, junior high school and two years no for senior high school no. Na yung track naman ay papunta no doon sa iba-iba no. Merong ang basically ang sinasabi ng ating pamahalaan para daw i-prepare yung ating mga kabataan ano doon sa employment mm -hmm. no so after graduation from high school ready na sila no kasi yung age nila ay maayos uh, pwede na ano no yung pwede ideal na age under this new system well 18 years old yung mga bata ay gagraduate na sila ng high school no ng ng, uh, ng year 12 no ng, ng grade 12 no mm -hmm. um, yun yung ideal na sinasabi no kasi that is one of the problems no na nakita ng Department of Education at ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas even the Department of Labor no na sinasabing yung ating mga graduate sa Pilipinas ay kulang ng haba ng taon ng pag-aaral so doon sa mga um, bansa no na gusto nilang magpatuloy uh, ng edukasyon or mag mag uh, magseek ng employment hindi sila natatanggap Mm. No, uh, yun yung, is, yun yung isang nilisold nire no, na itong mm -hmm. kailangan. Okay. Yes. But uh, do you think it's a matter, an issue of age or nasa qualifications ba? Because I'm curious na nagdagdag tayo, I mean, kami ni Rod, we were under the old system and all our parents yes. then, yes. and even you, yeah, di ba? Yeah, so, yung tanong dito, when you talked about a graduating age of 18, ako ay finished high school at 16, mm -hmm. uh, but normally it's really 16, 17. Yes. Uh, I felt na na-cover na lahat ng subjects. Even when I started college, yung iba, calculus, physics, it was basically, they were subjects na na-take up na namin before. Mm -hmm. So, with this new system na nagdagdag ng dalawang taon sa sen senior high school, what types of subjects yun nadagdag from well, the old curriculum? Ang sinasabi dito ng Department of Education yung dalawang taon ano, ng senior high school, ito ay, uh, ay parang yung mga general subjects na kinukuha natin sa, sa freshman natin sa kolehiyo ay doon na yan itinuturo. No? And actually, meron pang mga... Can you give uh, examples? Yeah. Ano yung mga sinasabing subjects that are now included na typically... Mm hindi ini-introduce until college na. Well, yung ano natin, no? yung, kasi depende yan. Depende pa rin sa pupuntahan ng mga bata. Meron dyan ay uh, tech book, no? technical vocational. No? So, yung mga bata na, mm -hmm. na okay na sila no? doon, no? doon sa, sa ganung track ay pepede na silang magtrabaho after. No? So, yung, yung, yung binibigay ngayon ng TESDA. Mm -hmm. no? So, after graduation from high school, yung mga bata na nandoon, nandoon sa group na yon ay pwede na silang magtrabaho. No? yun namang mag magpo ng professional courses no like uh, engineering no uh, medicine etc no ay kukuha naman sila ng preparation din ano hmm. doon sa kanika nilang mga mga courses na maiibigan ano po hmm. yun naman yung iba naman ay doon naman sa mga arts no doon sa music no um, um, literature etc hmm. so yan yung sinasabing hindi na cover no doon sa doon sa sa old curriculum natin mm -hmm. no sa high school no kaya pagdating mo sa sa kolehiyo yung actually minsan nga sinasabi pa yung first two years natin sa college no ay hindi talaga tayo Kal nag hindi talaga college uh, yeah, yeah, hindi uh, talaga tayo mm -hmm. nag-aaral no nung yeah. nung ating course na napili no kundi continuation niyan no but uh, when you ng, say na dinadagdag ka ng uh, technical or arts Hindi ba yan specialization na? Because um, I'm, I'm just curious kung if it's yun yung nadagdag sa when you're saying two years senior high school. Ah, y yes. No, Ay yun po yung mga idinagdag natin. Ano? Kasi mm -hmm. dun pa lang sa hanggang fourth year, I, I mean uh, grade 10, no? hanggang grade 10, yung present, 
no mm-hmm. na o yung old curriculum natin yun halos yun. yun din yung content okay. mm-hmm. no at pag pa, pagpunta doon sa senior high school kasi ang model natin dito yung european australian Correct. and i was going to say that i, I was going to mm-hmm. say make a point there na yung basis natin is european and american and and we we've, we've seen how well how their economy is yes. they they they're, they're first world and not only because mas pasipag sila but i think because of their educational system that's why for example mm-hmm. in this all of us, almost everyone in in the world would like to have a U.S. education, diba? Right? Mm-hmm. So if this was based on, let's say, U, the U.S. education, yeah, and we've seen the success of educa- the educational system in the U.S., d- don't you think that it's fair to say that, yeah, it's worth trying this, this K-12? Well, um, as early as 2010, ano, yun na yung position namin. No? Mm-hmm. Mukhang uh, baka maging trial and error no? itong uh, gagawin natin. Ano? Mm-hmm. Kasi sa US, Australia, Germany, no? Kung mm-hmm. yung kinukuna nating model no? na sinasabi nating yeah. advanced yung education, advanced yung technology, mm-hmm. advanced actually yung society. Mm-hmm. No? Kasi yeah. mayaman sila no? yeah, yes. na kumpara sa atin at uh, binibigay nila yung lahat ng pangangailangan para doon sa education system na, na ini-implement nila. Yun yung kulang sa atin. Mm-hmm. No? Yun yung sinasabi namin. No? Dati pa, na kung gusto natin ng world uh, standard no? ng, ng, ng um, kagaya ng mm-hmm. German system halimbawa, yeah. no? eh dapat yung ating unang issue, no? yung ating spending no yung ating allocation dapat katulad rin no kung paano mm, natin yan na gina, paano ginagawa yan sa Germany like in US halimbawa no 125 pesos katumbas ng 125,000 pesos no mm-hmm. yung uh, per capita spending nila sa atin that is around 7,000 pesos no so mm-hmm. mukhang mismatch no hindi mm-hmm. natin makukuha At kung yun lang yung standard lang ng haba ng taon eh baka mas magandang sumugal pa tayo doon sa nauna. After all, lahat tayo na narito ngayon no, ay produkto ng luma nating curriculum. But Benjo, as a teacher na part of the system, nagkaroon ba kayo ng added training for the K-12 system? Well, uh, syempre, yung change of uh, curriculum. Kasi ngayon naman, hindi pa naman ini-implement. No? Wala pa naman tayo doon sa senior high school. No? So, Yes, no, meron at uh, taon-taon ay nagkaroon nagkaroon ng mga ng mga training no, yung Department of Education at umaabot ngayon ng limang araw no na mm-hmm. na talagang live in ng mga seminars no para dun sa mga teachers no kung kung grade uh, 7 ngayon uh, yung mga grade 7 teachers ang i-train no and so on. So may mga ganun naman pero basically ito ay dun lang sa pagbago no ng curriculum. Mm-hmm. No, yung ituturo mismo ng mga teachers, no. Hmm. Yun lang, hindi pa yung yung buong system. Okay. Now, how how do you think um, in the overall, do you think this will improve the the chances of mga students to to get employment later on or uh, not just here, maybe abroad? Do you think it uh, by by matching our system with <laughs> yung uh, European and US uh, st- um, educational system? Well, hindi naman kami nagsasara, no? Pero ang lagi naming sinasabi, may requirements, no? May requirements kung tayo ay nangangarap, no? This is a very ambitious program, mm. no? Pero kung tayo ay nangangarap, wala namang masama. Mm. Pero dapat pag nangarap tayo, hindi lamang natin hindi lamang tayo pumupunta no doon mm-hmm. sa sa dulo ng pinapangarap natin. Dapat meron tayong yung mga yung system along the way. Yes, okay. no, meron tayong mga lahat no na kinakailangan no, para matupad yung pangarap natin. Sige. Eh. I, I still have a lot of questions lalo na for the parents out there. Yeah, so, maraming maraming uh, tanong. For now, we'll have to take a short break. Mm-hmm. And the Eagle Help Desk will return after this short break. You're still watching the Eagle Help Desk on the Solar News Channel with our guest, Mr. Benjo Basas. And joining us now is Assistant Secretary Tonisito Umali, Esquire of the Department of Education. Asek, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Y- yes, good evening, uh, Attorney Rod, uh, Attorney Karen. Magandang gabi po, Ka Benjo. Mm-hmm. Well, as we know, this is it's very timely, no? Because school is about to, to start or yeah. has started. Yes. Mm-hmm. And everyone has a lot of questions still, uh, despite the fact that. Uh, the K-12 uh, already uh, was implemented, or they began implement. You began implementing it even uh, three years ago, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so uh, our, our questions. We were talking to to Benjo, of course, uh, Asek, and uh, maybe you'd like to maybe expound further, no, on what he said. You know, what are the advantages that we're we're seeing, or what, what that the public or the can, parents expect? can expect? Yeah, pa- parents, parents can expect. Parents and the students. Yeah. Uh, K-12. Yeah. Uh, graduates of our senior high school 
will now be more prepared uh, in the world of work, uh, business, or uh, if they would like to enter college, mas na po silang magtuloy sa kolehiyo. Uh, mas uh, handa na rin po ang ating mga magtatapos uh, kumpara sa mga uh, natatapos po ng uh, lahat po ng mag-aaral sa buong mundo dahil uh, the, the concept of having uh, at least 11 to 12 years of basic education mm -hmm. is not something new. It's been going on uh, for so many years. I don't know since when, as early as 1920s, uh, they mm -hmm. were already saying that our 10-year basic education cycle is definitely not enough. Certainly, we're not simply talking about here of uh, adding uh, two more years. We're talking about curriculum. Mm -hmm. We are talking about decongesting curriculum. That's another uh, advantage and decongested uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. Ang ibig sabihin po niya na mas maraming oras po ang uh, maibibigay po natin para pag-aralan yung dapat pong mapag-aralan ng isang uh, mag-aaral na dapat pong makatapos ng basic education. And going back, because you're asking uh, Attorney Rod uh, for the advantages, theoretically, uh, if uh, the, the statistics will still be true by 2016 to 2018 or let's say 2018 where uh, only one half of our high school graduates proceed to college. Kung ganun po mangyayari, ang makakapagtapos ko ngayon ng basic education ay mas handa na po. They will be more equipped to, to enter the world of work. Uh, we're talking about uh, a certificate of competencies being uh, issued, uh, assuming that our graduates will pass the, 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 the examinations to be administered in coordination with TESDA. Mm. Armed with this certification, they could apply for work mm. and therefore, uh, mas uh, kikita na po siya theoretically uh, baka makapagtuloy po ng kolehiyo dahil may kakaya na po silang kumita. But mm -hmm. Asik Tony, I'm just curious for those who will go directly to college after high school don't you think meron redundancy or have you identified some redundancies? Okay. Uh, there will be uh, no redundancy the way you said it at Attorney Karen because mm -hmm wala pong makakapagtuloy ng kolehiyo nang uh, hindi po nagtatapos o dumadaan sa senior high school. Uh, mm -hmm. Yan po ang klaro, uh, uh, Attorney Karen. At uh, ang una pong maapektuhan, the first batch of uh, grades uh, 11 and 12 students uh, that we will have will be our incoming uh, third year or grade 9 students. Mm -hmm. In other words, our incoming grade 10, formerly fourth year high school students, may graduate and they may proceed directly to college. But our incoming uh, third year, formally we call it third year, I, I always uh, say that so that uh, mm -hmm. everybody will know what we're talking about. Or grade 9 students will proceed to grade 10 uh, next school year and then grade 11, they will not graduate. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, th th there will be no duplication uh, in that sense, if that's what you're... That's I, I was talking more about the curriculum. The, curri the curriculum? Uh, but um, yes. you said they can now be better prepared for work, they have, they'll have they have a certificate yes. of yes. Uh, accreditation. Yes. But then those who will go straight to college, they might be taking up subjects that uh, will be taken up in K-12. to Yes, but mostly uh, only the general education uh, subjects, uh, Attorney Karen. And uh, we expect, I don't want to make that pronouncement because it should be mm -hmm. Ched, we should be making the, the mm -hmm. necessary pronouncement that uh, those uh, subjects that we usually take, uh, we call them generally education during the first two years of college and uh, that will be taken up uh, during senior high school should not be taken up anymore in college. Uh, oh, so but, there's but, but, also a reform na, at least pina plano for, uh, for college, I'm, I'm, is that uh, I, I just hope that Chad will, 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 we'll will take, say we'll that. We'll take note of it, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll take oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. They, they, will say, they should say that, but I just don't want to say that because right. uh, we are only up to uh, basic no. education. A second, and also maybe to Benjo, no? um, of course, the, the usual complaint I hear from parents is that, wow, it's an additional two years. As we know, the, 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 in a way, to some extent, parents are kind of in a hurry for their their, their kids to graduate Correct. because na. <laughs> normal get yung mentality of some parents uh, you know because obviously additional two years means additional allowance hindi lang ano hindi lang yung tuition eh. yung mm -hmm. additional allowance yung shoes and and, and then clothes, delaying and, yeah, their yeah. income earning capacity it, that's you know? right uh -huh. delaying their income uh, yeah. capacity so yun yung uh, maybe we can address that a bit uh, but but we are only talking about I'll, I'll just immediately address the the the, the comment of attorney mm -hmm. Karen of uh, quote and unquote delaying their uh, their uh, income generating income years. Uh, generating years we are only talking about one half of our high school graduates who will proceed to college and one half of that one half will actually finish college 
for many reasons uh, based on our studies, one of which is financial capability, maybe they're not yet ready. Mm -hmm. In other words, yung sinasabi po natin na madedelay po ay uh, practically 25%, uh, unless uh, Kabenjo mm -hmm. will have a, a different figures on that. Ang klaro again, uh, Attorney Karen, based on the, the last uh, statistics that uh, we got, kalahati lamang po, forget okay. about K-12, ang magtatapos ng ating uh, mataas na paralan, ang magtutuloy ng kolehiyo at yung magtutuloy ng kolehiyo kalahati po lang po nun ang okay. makapagtatapos okay. ng kolehiyo mm -hmm. So, yun lang po ang tinitingnan natin. So, we are looking after Attorney Rod. Yeah, the, those... The three uh, forts, anyway. the, the, Yes, effectively, who, if we will equip them with the necessary skills, if they, for example, take the tech work track, mm -hmm. and, and since this is for free, and they will proceed to grades 11 to 12, then mm -hmm. because uh, presumably they, they, they have to mm -hmm. go on because this is for free. Without K-12, they have to go to a tech work school na kailangan may bayad. Right. Kung gusto po nilang uh, magtapos ng, uh, ng mga kurso tungkol sa pagbe-mechanic o technical vocational course. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, even if they proceed to a state university, meron din pong cost yan. Hindi po libre yan. Sila po ngayon ay inaasahan natin magtatapos ng uh, senior high school. Magkakaroon po sila ng kapasidad dahil po uh, junior high school pa lamang. During the exploratory TLE na tinatawag po namin, Technology and Livelihood Education. And then, uh, grades 9 and 10, na nagkaroon po sila ng pagkahasa. Kunyari, uh, pagmamekaniko, mm -hmm. tinuloy po nila, they could get uh, Certificate of Competencies, uh, mm -hmm. le level 1, level, level, level 1, mm -hmm. which they will never get mm -hmm. under the old uh, curriculum. They Sounds only get that. very specialized. Though. What if you're a parent na ayaw mo nang pahabain yung track ng anak mo then, under the K-12? Is then, that even an option for the parents out there? No, no attorney, attorney mm -hmm. Karen, because the law provides that uh, our basic education now will now be, uh, will now consist of one year of preschool education, six years of elementary, four years of junior high, and two years of senior and high. And this includes private schools as yes, well? Yes, yes. And that mm -hmm. means before you proceed to tertiary, uh, there's another law mm -hmm. saying that you have to complete basic education before you, you go to tertiary. Okay, we, uh, Asek uh, Benjo, we have some questions from our viewers. Let's start answering some of them with, with the help, of course, of our guests, starting with the question of Kenneth. I'm concerned with the quality of education of the students uh, with the new education system. How will the DEP end ensure that the quality of education will be better, as promised, when some teachers think that their workload doubles because of the K-12 and that they will not be properly compensated for it? Uh, right. Kabenjo, you want to comment on that? Well, uh, ever since naman, ano, uh, kahit ng old curriculum, no, ang reklamo naman, naman ng ating mga teachers, no, at uh, ito naman ay nakikita natin araw-araw, no, yung napakataas na workload ano po, at yung maliit na compensation. No. Pag sinabi po nating maliit, of course, I don't want to, to compare no, yung, yung teachers' compensation sa Pilipinas with other, uh, with private, halimbawa, with private schools. No. Dapat kasi ang comparison ay doon sa ating mga counterpart no sa Southeast Asia na lang no mm -hmm. kung saan sinasabi ng ating Department of Education na pinatutupad yung K-12 no sa Southeast Asia po ay eh, tayo ay eh, kasama sa may pinakamababa no na napasahod sa mga guro no um, isa pa syempre yung status mismo no yung yung sweldo no ay nagdedetermine siya ng status at ng treatment ng society no doon sa mga manggagawa doon sa mga empleyado no at kung ganito lamang yung aming sweldo no sa kasalukuyan ano uh, again hindi hindi natin i-compare sa mga maliliit na mga private schools no eh ganito lang pala no yung pagturing ng ating uh, gobyerno no? so yun yung aming hinihingi no dapat kasabay nung nung um, yun yung ambisyon natin ano na 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 paghusayin no na yung quality ng education ng Pilipinas under this uh, new system dapat yung quality rin, no ng buhay ng ating mga guro ay wag nating iwanan mm -hmm. kasi ang ang education ay dependent largely no doon sa ating mga guro at alam naman po natin yan kung sila ay masyadong pagod no stress mm -hmm. no um, um physically talagang masyadong maraming iniintindi no mm -hmm. at economically rin no eh baka hindi po sila makapagturo ng maayos kagaya ng inaasahan natin under K12 uh, I, I will touch uh, very generally on uh, teachers' compensation, attorney Karen, attorney mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, how will we ensure? I think that's the question. Mm -hmm. That uh, this will be the effective. Quality is good. The yes. quality. I'll, I'll talk about the subjects, maybe uh, mm -hmm. generally. Uh, what will we take up in, uh, in in senior high school? There will be core subjects that na tawag attorney Karen. Uh, Attorney Rod, common to all tracks. Kasi may apat pong tracks na pwede pong pagpidian. Ang ating mga mag-aaral yung tech voc track, academic track, sports, uh, and, and then uh, arts, arts tra uh, track. Uh, 
So, but say so, going to mini college. Mini college. Oh, parang yeah. ganun po, pwede po nating sabihin oh. ganun. Parang where are you leaning? Where are you leaning? Medyo arts? Oh, oh. O dito ako. Yes. Yes. Medyo, I like making uh, kalikot uh, yes. Yes. mechanical, mechanical no. stuff. So, yeah. Yes, okay. I'm going this way. And, and the core subject that is uh, common uh, to all uh, st uh, tracks uh, shall be language, humanities, uh, communication, mathematics, science, social science, philosophy, PE, and health. I'll give some example uh, of subjects that will be taken up in the uh, academic uh, strand. If we talk, for example, of the uh, academic track, may isa pong strand yan tawag namin, accountancy, business, and management strand. They will be talking about uh, academic uh, attorney rod. Uh, siguro yung mga graduate po ng, yeah. I don't mean any by, uh, anything by this, I'm just saying a statement of fact. Siguro, graduate po ng Ateneo, most probably they will pursue academic track or savior or mm -hmm. LaSalle. Lasal. Uh, uh, we're talking about... Uh, Accountancy, businessmen, and management strand. Kung yung pong kinuha nila, they will be taking up applied economics, business ethics, fundamentals of accountancy, and management one, fundamentals of accountancy, business and management two, business math, business finance, organization and management, principles of marketing. If they will take, uh, sounds for like example, a yeah. college curriculum. Yes, no? yes, yes. Oh, more complex so than my yes. business management course. Senior high school. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, attorney mm -hmm. Karen. Now, if they will take the science, technology, engineering, STEM. and mathematics strand, what we call STEM. Sample subjects that they will be taking up will be pre-calculus, basic calculus, general biology 1, 2, physics 1, 2, general chemistry 1, 2, and then they have a subject, what we call work immersion, research, career advocacy, culminating activity. What we're trying to say, tech voc track, uh, if we talk about uh, tech voc, yeah, tech. Uh, tech uh, tech tech choices tech. will be bread and pastry production, food and beverage, will oh. be, they, they will have the option of uh, getting uh, computer programming, <laughs> medical transcription, uh, animation. Some of yeah. these are in demand. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Jobs, yes. No? So, so, so now the question is, paano po natin masisiguro na ito po'y magiging epektibo na pag nagtapos ang ating mga mag-aaral ay may kakayanan po silang kumita. Yun po ang kasagutan po namin. Yung mga asignaturang ituturo po sa kanila ay yung mga asignaturang dapat po nilang Ma maunawaan, matutunan, high school pa lamang po, at hindi nila kailangan magtungo ng kolehyo. Yeah. I'm talking about the tech book track. I'm yeah. going back, uh, Trini Rod, to what I, I, I mentioned. Yeah. They will get certificate of competencies. And before, that's how they get uh, jobs, uh, Trini Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, ang kaibahan nga lang nito, hindi sila nagtuloy ng ng tech, uh, tech so voc college. Uh, yeah. uh, college. college. They don't have a college They degree. just took our tech, uh -huh. uh, tech book track. And for those who, who graduated uh, in our senior high school and took the for example, the ABM strand and the accountancy, businessman, and management strand uh, in particular. Pwede po sila maging bookkeeper. Pwede mm -hmm. sila maging uh, clerk. At uh, ang, ang mahalaga po dito, Attorney Karen, ito pong mga, uh, mga asignaturang ito, itong uh, specializations na ito o uh, track na ito ay base po kung anong industriya meron ang bawat region. Inaakma po namin ito. Ngayon pa lamang po, halimbawa sa Maynila, uh, nakipag-meeting po kami kong Sandy Ocampo together with our uh, school division superintendent and our principals. They were already talking, ngayon pa lamang po, to uh, owners of, uh, of uh, automotive oh, companies. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -oh. And we are engaging them. What are the mm -hmm. subjects that you want to, to learn? What, what do you want our students to learn so that you will hire them? May mga ganun pag-uusap. Yes. Doon po sila mag-OJT. Ganun po ang isang uh, feature nitong uh, tech book. Okay. Mabilis na mabilis po sa, yes. sa sweldo. Naunawa ako po yung sinasabi ni Ka Benjo. Ang opisyal na pahayag po dyan, attorney Karen, ng ating kagawaran ay sinusuportahan po natin lahat ng panukala, attorney Ron na naglalayong tagdagan ang uh, benepisyo ng ating mga guro, ngunit kailangan po nating unawain. So, sinusuportahan. Paano po dapat ba mangyari ito, Atty. Karen? Mm -mm. We, have to, And, we need to have a meaningful discussion. So, yes. when we talk about salary increases, Atty. Karen, we're not simply talking about salary increases for our teachers because right now we have the salary standardization law. Mm -hmm. We cannot simply increase the salary grade level or the amount Uh, uh, corresponding to salary grade 11, the, 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 the entry level for our teachers, without increasing the salary of all our workers. All When I say this, government workers, Attorney Ron, are we not supporting? No, we are supporting, but all that we are saying is, let's have a meaningful discussion. So when we talk about resources, not only resources to fund salary increases for our teachers, but for all government okay. employees. Okay. I'll ask you more about that, but for now, we'll have to take a short break. <laughs> yes. Legal Help Desk will return after this reminder.
Welcome back to Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel with our guests, ASEC Tunisito Umali and Mr. Benjo Basas. Now, quick question, uh, ASEC. Uh, about, this is applicable to all, is K-12, applicable to all schools, private and, and public. What if there are certain private schools that say, no, I'm sorry, this is not going to be for us. It's going to affect our PNL, our uh, profitability and all correct, that. Correct. So we'll, we'll conduct it our own way. Uh, Anima, and if they don't do it, what are the penalties? Uh, when we say they will conduct it in their own way, that should mean they will not offer senior high school, for example. They don't yeah. want to offer mm -hmm. senior high school. Then, uh, Meaning that, they'll do it the old way. Well, but, but still, their graduates will not proceed to college. So what will happen is uh, their graduates will be forced, quote and unquote, to, if they want like to proceed to college, find another school that? offering uh, senior mm -hmm. high school. So it's no different. Siguro poor comparison because this is elementary, secondary. Para pong paaralan na Tony Karen na ang kanyang uh, uh, ino-offer lamang ay elementarya, walang high school. So, hindi pwede siya kung nung araw, forget about K-12. Walang high school na ino-offer ang isang paaralan. Hmm. Elementarya lamang, hindi siya pwede magtuloy ng kolehiyo. So, kailangan maghanap siya ng paaralan na, na nag-offer ng, uh, so, ng high school. Parang ganun po ang, ang mangyayari ngayon dito at Trinity Road. Parang hanggang junior high school lang ino-offer ng school mo. But Benjo and, uh, Benjo and Asik Tony, is it possible na meron ka ng private school that already complies with K-12? How does the DepEd determine that? Is it just based on the number? Let's say they have 13 years, years or, already. There are some schools mm -hmm. that offer already 13 years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, nursery. I yes. actually went through 13 yeah. years. Right? Of, uh, um, mayroon po na nagko-comply na sa K-12. Kaya nga po ang ginagawa po nila, ang atin po tinutukoy, maaari po dyan ay yung mga paaralan na bago pa po ang K-12 law, ay nag-offer na ng two years at least of preschool education. Mm -hmm. Five years old ang kanilang kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Uh, seven years of elementary, that's mm -hmm. two plus seven, that's nine, mm -hmm. and another four years of high school. Right. What they do, Attorney Karen, is that they will now adjust their curriculum mm -hmm. uh, and they do some recalibration, we call it recalibration, because they will now tell uh, DEPED, you know, not exactly the way I'm going to tell it right now, but it's like DEPED, right now, even without K-12, what yeah. we're teaching right now, we look at your K-12 curriculum, our grade seven is the equivalent of your third year mm. K-12. to So we will now look, you, you ask Attorney Rod, what uh, are we doing? So they will now submit a transition plan. Mm. We will look at their curriculum. We will look at the way they would like to recalibrate. They will mm. now call their grade seven students after recalibration, instead of proceeding to grade eight, mm -hmm. they will go to grade nine. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we will now say, we approve your transition plan. You're okay. But some uh, schools, uh, Attorney Karen, we will uh, see that uh, it is not exactly true that uh, uh, their grade 7 is equivalent to our first year high school. Mm -hmm. It's like more or less like our first year high school, but you lack these competencies. And what these private schools will do is that they will now do what they call bridging program. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they do it uh, during summer or during, as they proceed. So we look at their transition plan. That's how we do it, Attorney Ron, to answer your, your question. Right. Now, does, does this impact um, on... Uh, the government's resources. No? I mean, because I, I would imagine with, with these ad two additional years would require more, more infrastructure, more classrooms, more... Mm -hmm. Will it... Uh, is the, is, I guess my question is, is the DepEd ready for uh, just more than just ad adding those two years, infrastructure-wise, uh, resources-wise? Uh, yeah. uh, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And when we say that we are ready, mm -hmm. uh, we have the plan mm -hmm. how to make this happen. Uh, we have the funds we, we, that we, we will need. Uh, we will propose to Congress mm -hmm. and we will have uh, the funds necessary to construct the additional facilities uh, for our senior high school uh, program mm -hmm. uh, uh, come 2016 to 2018. When we say yes, we are ready, uh, that means that uh, we acknowledge the fact that some of our high schools uh, and even private schools, just like what Attorney Karen or, and Attorney Rod uh, what you said that they will say we will not offer uh, senior high school but we have a plan like talking to our HEIs because we know that uh, by 2016 to 2018 or even beyond they will have no uh, or they, they, they don't know not enough uh, incoming uh, freshmen or sophomore students mm -hmm. college students uh, mm -hmm. will, will, will be yeah. will be entering uh, the, their colleges and universities and therefore we have this uh, strategy to engage them That's right. talk to them use their facilities Either to for us to use their facilities and put our for teachers, those two years, no, well, graduates, yes, no? yes, or mm -hmm. attorney Rod, they will uh, offer their uh, professors. Mm -hmm. Pati ngayon yung issue ng uh, mm -hmm. kawalan ng mag-aaral na kanila right. pong uh, tuturuan, right. uh, matutugunan, at sila po magtuturo ng kito talo. May mga ganyang pag-uusap. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, our GASPE program, mm -hmm. 
how we intend to 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 support our senior high school students how much will we give a uh, voucher system po ito at paano po sila maghahanap ng para that sounds like a very complicated endeavor now we yeah. have questions from our viewers yeah. and one right. is from Jerome how come not all schools offer step up programs to their students who can be entitled to this step ang up dahilan po diyan uh, i assume yung ibig sabihin po nila diyan yung uh, when i talk about recalibration mm -hmm. transition plan ang dahilan po niyan uh, attorney Karen attorney Ron mm -hmm. ay iba-iba po ang curriculum na ipinapatupad ng ating mga pampribadong paaralan. Walang mga pagsabi. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about one, uh, one, one uh, private uh, elementary school. They're offering five years old, kinder one. Six years old, kinder two. Eight, uh, another seven years old, kinder three. So iba po yun. And then they have six years of uh, elementary education. Now, they come to us. They're telling us, our kinder three is actually your grade one or your grade two. Kasi ang kailangan lang naman po, one year of preschool uh, education. But sa kanila, as far as they're, they're concerned, preschool pa yun nung araw. And then they say, magkakalun lang kami ng bridging uh, program. We will now say uh, definitively, categorically, that the competencies of our K2, K3, and grade one is the equivalent of your uh, grade one, two, and three students under K-12. Now, do you have another school which has... Uh, two years of uh, preschool but only six years of elementary education. Meron namang isang paaralan, two years of uh, preschool, seven years of elementary education. That's the reason why uh, some yeah, of yeah. our schools will have the, 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 the texture, the call it, call it a, a step up program. You uh -huh. know? Others call it a bridging program. Iba-iba po ang situation. I see. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Janet naman shares uh, with us, my cousin is about to enter Grade 7 this school year, but his school divided this year to accommodate two levels, meaning he will be attending Grade 7 in the first half of the school year and then take Grade 8 in the second half. Is this in accordance with the K-12 system? The answer should be yes if they are implementing this with our approval. Uh, I can only second guess right now uh, what's going on uh, with the school. Maybe uh, this school uh, is saying... Uh, uh, our curriculum, actually, he's talking about uh, one half is uh, grade seven mm -hmm. and, and the another half, half grade is grade eight. eight. Yeah. They're saying that their grade six actually has the competency of a grade seven or first year high school student uh, nung araw po. Pero hindi po uh, kumpleto. Yeah. But we have to teach them a little. Mm -hmm. So that accounts for the one half. Right. And then they may say that, uh, and, the, and, the, and therefore, kung Kung uh, uh, nakuha na nila yung competencies ng isang grade 7, naturally, they're entitled to be grade 8. Something like that. Uh, uh, attorney so, Rod. So, yes, Benjo. Would you say, uh, Benjo, that it's not a matter of nomenclature or names, yes. more of yung kung ano yung standard? And then, uh, basically, if the DEPED allows it, no, then the private school would, would implement those kind mm -hmm. of um, well, adjustments. Well, 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 well uh, just, just to explain, just to explain, uh, explain why uh, it's happening, you know. I'm just uh, second guessing right now why it even mm -hmm. happened, but it's all about the, the bottom line. Is it's all about curriculum. Mm -hmm. The reason why they're saying that is that in some form we are advanced. So that's the general idea behind that uh, mm -hmm. uh, behind that uh, transition program. Yeah. But while we are advanced, we cannot categorically say that we are the equivalent of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we need mm -hmm. to learn some more, mm -hmm. you know, some competencies. And that's why they, they yeah. devise that. We look into their curriculum. Right. Iyan naman pong sinasabi nila, eh, para po yan sa uh, grade 6 nila, patungong grade 8 po siguro, mm -hmm. uh, or what. Pero meron din pong ganyan mangyayari yan, sa kanilang uh, grade 5, going to, hindi lang naman yan, uh, halos mm -hmm. ako po nakakasiguro, yes. patungong grade 6 at grade 7. But just to clarify, uh, Asek, it's not possible na mali yung nagawa nung... School. No, no, we have so to approve they that. have to really... We have to approve uh, that. It, I have to approve uh, may approval talaga ng uh, DepEd yan. So, uh, pagka mga parents, uh, at least they can be assured na if the school is operating, it means tama or compliant yung system with the K-12. Specifically, Attorney Karen, when we say uh, operating and, and implementing this kind of uh, mm -hmm. transition program, mm -hmm. uh, we should have the approval. They should uh, secure DepEd approval because we have to look into the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. we have right. another question from mm -hmm. Kiko. One of the benefits presented from the implementation of the K-12 was its affordability. How will it be affordable when some schools are charging 50 to 100,000 pesos a year? 
Ito ato yung mga, yeah, yeah lalo so na yung mga, mga international schools. Oh. Are international earlier. schools covered as well? Ben, uh, but ben those are private schools. Na. Mm. So they have the option to, to enroll in public schools. And in public mm. schools, eh, this is uh, actually free. Mm -hmm. no? so For public schools, it's free. But then mm. realistically, kahit uh, international schools, they're covered now yes, by yeah. the K-12. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And, and they're doing... Some form but of I cannot imagine well. parents mm. transferring their kids from IS to <laughs> uh, public, public schools. School. So it's really more expensive for them, no? Yeah. And their system is uh, different. They, they don't have, in other words, a 10 year, ten year basic education cycle. Uh, you, you know, you're talking about uh, international schools mm -hmm. prior to K 12. All right. More they already have uh, their own K 12. Okay, we have a question from uh, Arsenio. Okay, why not return uh, the NCEE and have those who would fail be required to take another year in high school before he or she is admitted to college? Uh, mahabang usapin po yan. Yung NCEE, uh, that's the National College Entrance NCAA. Examination, uh -huh. na kung saan nung araw po ay kapag hindi nyo po naipasa ito, hindi ko yeah. kayo pwede magtuloy yeah, ng I, kolehiyo. I, I took that. I took uh -huh. Yeah, I took uh, attorney Rod. Uh, it shows my age. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, medyo, Did you take it? No? Uh, Parang kami, uh, we it? had NSAT. NSAT. Uh, and then you have this Makiki NSAT story. na rin ako kaya tayo ni Karen. Mas ki NCEE rin ako. I took that. Ang, ang, uh, ang uh, dahilan po dyan ay hindi naman po yan ang ating tiniting ng solusyon dun po sa problema natin sa ating curriculum. Ang, the basic problem is we are not, number one, uh, aligned to what's going on in the whole world. Uh, number two, uh, we recognize the, the fact, nakita ko po kanina uh, sa, sa teleprompter po, na na we intend to decongest the curriculum. While we say we are not aligned uh, with what's going on in the whole world, we are actually teaching what needs to be learned in 10 years. Mm -hmm. For other countries, they're teaching it in 12 years. So, so that's what we're just trying to say. So we're aligning uh, to, to, to uh, what should be done, mm -hmm. what, what is old, what should be going on. And, mm -hmm. And uh, ito pong K-12, sa totoo po lamang, sana manawaan po ng ating mga kababayan. Hindi po ito inimbento lamang ng Pilipinas at ito po ipapatupad sa Pilipinas yeah. lamang at naayos po namin pahirapan kayong lahat. Ito po yung nangyayari sa buong mundo at dapat po uh -huh. matuwa po tayo dahil hindi lamang po ito sa buong mundo na, uh, nangyayari, yeah. Attorney Ron. Yeah. Nangyayari ito sa pampribadong paaralan, Attorney yeah. Karen. Uh -huh. Ibang uri lamang ng K-12. Uh -huh. Just like what I told you, yung mga may kaya po magpaaral. Uh -huh. They will enroll their, 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 their child in schools offering mm -hmm. some form of K-12 even before the law. What am I talking about, Attorney Ron? Two years of preschool, seven years of elementary, that's two plus seven, nine. Another four years, they don't mind. And then pagpasok sa kolehyo ng anak nila, Ateneo Lasal uh, Savior, 17, 18 anos na po. Mm -hmm. Ito po ngayon ay ipinapantay po natin, hindi lamang po mm -hmm. sa buong mundo, kundi pati po sa mga pampribadong paaralan na nagpapatupad na ng isang uri ng K-12. Ito po ay para po sa ating mga kababayan mm -hmm. na wala pong uh, our, kakayanan. Our okay. teachers ba, well, our teachers ba are capable, uh, already trained? Uh, there's a program, a training program for, I for them? I think Benjo can answer yeah, this. He's a teacher Benjo. himself. Yeah, uh, actually, no, ang, ang mga teachers naman natin, pero ngayon kasi wala pa naman yung senior high school, no? so yung mga specialized na no, no, competencies. No? Pero yung training natin ka, Benjo, sa mga um, um, guru natin na nagtuturo sa grades 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, ibahagi yeah, mo. Yeah, hanggang ngayon, no, no, yun, binab binanggit ko naman kanina, no, no, kami ay actually hanggang bago mag-open mag, mag ng klase ay ongoing pa, no, yung nung mga panahon okay. na yun, yung training. No? So medyo malalima na yung mga training, you know. Um, baka lang ano lang, baka lang ang kulang lang natin ngayon, baka materials pa hmm. no? doon. No? Siguro, the, the DepEd would be honest naman, ano, na talagang kapos na kapos no? hanggang ngayon. Ano? Hmm. Yung grade 8 ngayon, ay yung grade 9 ngayon, hanggang ngayon ay wala pa no? ng, ng teaching materials o teaching guides. No? Hmm. Lalo na doon sa mga areas na talagang malayo no? sa sentro, no? sa mga lungsod. I may, I may have missed it earlier. No? You were talking about you know, different, ano, ano, different, I guess, Leanings. I don't know. You call it track. Is yeah, it, we call it tracks. tracks. Yeah. All right. Uh, I kind of missed out. I don't, I'm not sure if I heard anything. Uh, sa computer, sir. Sa, sa, sa tech book po yun. Tech book. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sa oh. Tech book po yun ah, okay. It's a very interesting okay, very topic, interesting. no? Sayang kulang sa time. Oh, sayang. And but uh, it, thank you so much, Asik Tino, yeah. for also orienting us in the, the different tracks because now it gives us a clearer idea mm -hmm. ano ba yung two years na nadagdag because mm -hmm. others think na same subjects, pinahaba yeah. lang. So thank you for that and we'd like to thank our guest, Assistant Secretary Tonisto Umali Esquire from the Department of Education and Mr. Benjo Basas, Chairperson of the Teachers' Dignity Coalition for being with us tonight in discussing the legal rights on the K-12 system. Thank, thank you, you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Legal Help Desk will return after this short break. Welcome back to Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. Yeah. And today, tamang tama yeah, so pasukan yung topic natin. It's very K educational. To 12. Pro yes. Educational program. Yeah. Yes. But I think one thing that we really learned today that's uh, very important is understanding what K to 12 means. Mm -hmm. It means that for parents out there mm -hmm. or for students out there, you will really spend more time in school. But it sounds like it's going to be a productive. Uh, 13 years yeah. in school because now uh, you have one year of kindergarten and what we're familiar with grade 1 to 6 tapos grade 7 to 10 and then two years of senior high school mm -hmm. but like what uh, our assistant secretary umali read to us today you just to give us an idea what this two years of senior high school means it means that you will have additional subjects that fits a track that you will select and what types of tracks are available. Meron yeah. tech. Meron, meron tech and tech mm -hmm. vocational. There's arts, all right? Uh, there's um, what they call, it's like business. Meron nga isa para, so business, meron yeah. business, meron isa science. And, and science. Science oh, where you take yeah. up calculus mm -hmm. and, and biology. And sports. There's a strand there's for sports, sports. which uh, I think is, is great. No? Like for example, myself, no? I'm Although I'm a lawyer, I, I, I'm into sports marketing. So, but that one, I kind of just learned on my own. No? It'll mm -hmm. be nice to have a track where where you yes. learn. And it uh, sounds like meron isa na parang sports. HRM naman. Sabi mm -hmm. niya parang if you like baking, pastry making, yeah. meron ding ganon. So, tech, tech currently, yeah. what we gone through before mm -hmm. was that we don't take these types of subjects. But this one, the idea is you can be issued certificates of competence where you can find work easily after even if you do not pursue college. Yeah, kasi mga, mga ganong skills, nyari, uh, chef for example, or let's say, a pastry chef, di ba? Mga yan, they can, they can start earning money. So let's say you don't have your pay, uh, and one of the reasons why uh, 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 young people can't finish college, it's not because that they can't do it, it's because financially they're, they're not capable. So what's, uh, what's happening is uh, here you equip them with enough education so that they can take a particular job, let's say a pastry chef, they can start earning and using that money to go mm -hmm. straight to college and have a full college education. So, yun yung, yun yung whole point. Yes. Yeah. And for parents out there, make sure that the school that your child goes to complies with the K-12 program because this is mandatory for public and private schools. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once again, very educational for, for both of us and I, I, I hope uh, very educational for all our televiewers. Now, uh, we have some recap questions uh, from Jeannie. Uh, these are questions that uh, uh, relate the to... the past week. Yeah, yes. relate to topics that we, we touched on uh, the past week. So, this question is from Jeannie. I've been separated for 12 years. How can I legalize our separation? Mm -mm. Yeah, well, so, again, yeah. uh, after our episode last week, one thing we learned or should have learned is that annulment only has one ground and this is psychological incapacity. And unless there are circumstances that makes your marriage void from the start, like if you lacked a marriage license or one of the married couples is a minor. So if you've been separated for 12 years, even if it's that long, you can't automatically get an annulment. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get legal separation, but again, this is not based on separation. just the number of years that you've been apart. You need to have grounds kasama na dyan yung for instance, infidelity or abandonment. So if the 12-year separation constitutes abandonment, then maybe you can file a case for legal separation. But you have to find out, because maybe naman yung 12 years na yan, mm. it's just because your spouse is working abroad. So mm. kung ganun yung circumstance, then that's like support pa siya sayo, then it's not, it might not automatically be a ground for legal separation. Mm. But in order to find out, uh, my advice is also consult a lawyer so you can give the circumstances, kung ano ba yung 12 years apart na yan, is it abandonment na, and is it a, a viable ground for filing a case for legal separation? Yeah, it's worth pointing okay. out, there's actually a bill, there's a bill in, in the Senate where, you know, separation, five, years separation five years of separation will, will be a ground for annulment, but it's only just a bill, uh -huh. so it's, it's so not just a law. law. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, good point though. Okay, we raised. have another recap question from Jenny. My uncle has been married for 62 years and has only found out that his wife has been cheating on him for the past 23 years. 
We told him to file for a case of adultery against the wife and the lover, but he refused, saying that he has forgiven her. Instead, he wants to file a case against the lover. Can he file a case against the lover only? Can he file for legal separation using adultery as reason to avoid jail time for the wife? Okay, two questions. Mm -mm. Two questions. The first so one. first question, uh -huh. uh, Jenny. Unfortunately, your uncle cannot just choose to file a case for adultery against the lover only. So the crime of adultery is obviously present here. It's, um, it's uh, the, 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 the fact that there's an affair yung wife niya for the past 23 years. Meron siyang pwedeng i-file na adultery, but it has to be against both. Kung hindi siya willing i-file against both the wife and the lover, then it cannot be filed against the lover only. Kasi co-principal sila for the crime of adultery. Right. And, and then the next that, question the next would is, be, uh, legal is separation? it a, file, uh, a case of for legal separation? separation. Yes, yes infidelity. Is yeah, infidelity is a grounds for legal separation. Yun, yeah, but of course, you have, to, you have to prove the adultery. You know? Of course, uh, when you say, I, you know about... Uh, the, the wife cheating for 23 years, uh, at the end of the day, you still have to prove that. No? Mm -hmm. You have to prove that there was in, indeed But at least a legal separation, it's a civil case or a family mm -hmm. case. It's not a case for adultery, which is a crime. So when you said the jail time to escape jail time, if your uncle only files for uh, legal separation, hindi naman makukulong yung wife niya, but they can be legally separated, meaning yung consequence yan, they don't have to live together, pwedeng ma-separate yung properties nila, and they can to even talk about custody. Alright, alright. From Delilah, my husband died uh, a long time ago, leaving me and our two children. My brother-in-law, uh, so I assume the brother of her, her husband, took possession of all my husband's properties and businesses. Can I still go after these even after 20 years? I now have psoriasis and I'm suffering. So apparently there was no, mm -mm. Uh, I guess, uh, settlement, settlement of the estate. estate yeah. um, because yeah. the brother-in-law has no right yeah. to the properties of your He's not husband. A compulsory, he's not a yes. compulsory heir. Oh, so. oh, ang compulsory heir, meaning you mm. may karapatan dun sa mga properties ng asawa mo upon his death, would be you and your two kids. So, mm. dapat walang right dito yung brother-in-law. And if he took possession, you have to check. Nagkaroon ba ng estate case or meron bang will that was exec that can be executed that appoints him mm. as the executor. Meaning, yeah. kaya siya may karapatan. Yeah. But in terms of owning the properties, your brother-in-law has no right yeah. to them. So, it's worth what pointing you can out, do? worth pointing out, Delilah, that... Uh, the, the, the ownership of your property, of the, your husband's property, transferred upon the time of death. It's not uh, by, by will or by, uh, by, by any act. No? By, the, by the fact that he died, automatically the ownership transferred to you and your children, the compulsory heirs. Mm -mm. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So she, she should contest that. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, all right. Okay. That's all the time that we have for tonight. We would like to thank our guests, ASEC Tonisito Umali, Esquire from the Department of Education, and Mr. Benjo Basas, Chairperson of the Teachers' Dignity Coalition, for being with us tonight in discussing the K-12 system. If you have any questions or comments on tonight's episode, share them with us on our Facebook and Twitter pages. All right, I'm Attorney Rod Nepomuceno. And I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. If you missed any of our previous episodes, you may watch these at your convenience by simply downloading the Solar News Channel app on your mobile devices from Google Play and the Apple App Store. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. Good night.